The last subtopic for chapter 6 is subtopic 6.3, which is about Lu Chatelier's principle. Okay, so here's the learning outcomes for 6.3. By the end of the lesson, so you should know how to able to state the Lu Chatelier's principle, apply the Lu Chatelier's principle to explain the effect of the following factors on the system at equilibrium, such as concentration, pressure, addition of inert gas at constant volume and at constant pressure, temperature, and catalyst. Okay, so this is how you should pronounce this famous French chemist behind the chemical equilibria correctly. Le Chatelier. Okay, that's how you pronounce it, okay? Le Chatelier. Okay, so Le Chatelier is, is a French chemist and he basically states that Okay, bila chemical system tu is disturbed, kamu kacau dia punya equilibrium, dia tak mencapai equilibrium, apa yang akan dilakukan oleh sistem tersebut, dia dia punya net reaction tu ikutlah dia nak shift to the left ke ataupun shift to the right untuk dia reduce the effect of the disturbance sampailah dia mencapai balik tahap equilibrium. Okay guys, for example, if you have this reversible chemical reaction but sometimes we call it as chemical system okay pada asalnya mereka ni berada pada equilibrium okay uh, but what if kita kacau dia punya equilibrium tersebut by adding more product more NH3 kita introduce NH3 pada chemical system ni so kita dah kacau lah maksudnya bila kita add ni tiba-tiba lah produk ni akan jadi banyak concentration of product ni akan increase uh, lepas tu the system will not be at equilibrium So Q tak sama dengan K balik So macam mana kita nak uh, bagi dia Correctkan dia Bagi dia uh, jadi equilibrium kembali So as you can see Bila kita add more energy dia, Ini akan menyebabkan Concentration of product akan bertambah Okay so we need to correct it out How can you reduce the disturbance So what can you do Ialah you boleh reduce the increase of Concentration NH3 ni, macam mana you nak reduce kan dia? Uh, what can you do is you can buat the net reaction tu proceeds to the left because bila dia proceeds to the left therefore concentration of product ni akan berkurang okay? so bila concentration of product berkurang makanya Q akan kembali equals to K that means the equilibrium is achieved again but you need to take note here Although that you dah kurangkan the disturbance, tak bermaksud kita eliminate the whole NH3, okay? Uh, it is just reduced but we don't eliminate it. Okay, sebagai contoh lah, if you have this reversible chemical reaction, where you add more Cl2 pada this chemical system, bila you add more Cl2, okay, uh, therefore dia punya equilibrium akan disturb. This is the disturbance yang you add. Okay, bila you add more CL2, apa yang akan berlaku PCL3 ni juga akan meningkat, ok? Walaupun you add salah satu dekat uh, komponen reactant saja, so therefore all of these reactants punya concentration akan meningkat ok? So this whole thing akan meningkat. So untuk reduce the disturbance, dia kena kurangkan the concentration of uh, concentration of the reactant so macam mana nak kurangkan the concentration of reactant, uh, therefore dia kena shift direction to the right. Bila dia shift direction, dia buat correction. Dia shift direction to the right. Makanya, uh, the concentration of PCL3 dengan CL2 ni boleh berkurang. Okay? So, therefore, after dia dah correctkan everything, uh, kita akan dapat new equilibrium kat sini lah. Di mana uh, the new concentration of PCL3 dengan CL2 berkurang daripada asalnya. Okay? Uh, kalau you tak percaya, boleh tengok dekat this table. Okay. As you can see here, uh, the new equilibrium concentration untuk reactant Cl2 dengan PCL3 both uh, rendah lagi daripada concentration of product PCL5, 0.637 kan. Uh, this is just because of dia dah buat correction tu lah. Uh, nak cakap macam tu lah ya. Okay, basically there are few factors yang akan affect the system at equilibrium. The first one is concentration and the next is pressure and volume. Uh, the third one is temperature and the last one is the presence of the catalyst. Okay, I would like to discuss the first factor that will affect the system at equilibrium which is concentration. Okay, 
So, for example, kalau let's say you uh, increasekan concentration dekat the chemical system, uh, the system akan react to consume some of it. Okay, so for example, if you have this chemical system, okay, but what if you introduce ataupun you add more Cl2 pada this chemical system? So, apa yang berlaku walaupun you add salah satu je dekat bagian reaktor ni, uh, the whole, this whole reaktor dia akan bertambah dia punya concentration dia, okay? Uh, so, bila this uh, whole reaktor bertambah, uh, you, apa yang you kena buat ialah you kena reduce kan how to correct it, you need to reduce the punya concentration of return so in this case untuk reduce kan the concentration of return the reaction will shift to the right, so bila dia shift to the right, uh, makanya concentration of return akan berkurang okay. kalau let's say um, you nak tengok benda ni dengan lebih mendalam uh, you buat expression QC untuk this chemical system di mana concentration of product berada di atas okay and then concentration of reactant berada di bawah okay in this case because you add Cl2 okay bila you add Cl2 therefore Q ni akan berkurang kan sebab dia punya relationship ni dah indirectly proportional because dia uh, macam kat bawah dengan atas kan uh, so produk akan berkurang uh, betul kan kita punya analogi ni akan ikutkan this uh, apa tu expression ok so sekarang ni since Q berkurang you tahulah kat sini yang um, actually Q ni QC is less than KC how do you know is uh, because ni lah you tahu you add Cl2 makanya Q berkurang uh, PC, uh, concentration of PCL5 yang produk ni berkurang uh, therefore Q ni will be less than KC so the system is not at equilibrium so how can you reduce the disturbance according to the Lewis-Chatelier's principle ok what can you do ialah you need to proceed the reaction to the right ok as what I told you just now ok uh, since that Q less than K kan uh, kalau you ingat balik Pac-Man you draw this pacman uh, you tahu pacman ni nak makan belah kanan uh, so dia akan proceed direction to the right okay so bila dia proceed direction to the right uh, makanya bila dah, dia dah correctkan everything the concentration of PCL5 pun akan increase ialah you dah correctkan dia dia ke, ke kanan uh, makanya concentration of product akan increase concentration of Reactant, PCL3 and also CL2 pun akan jadi decrease. Okay, so for example, if you look at this um, apa itu, table, okay, as you can see here, uh, concentration of reactants ni berkurang daripada concentration of product. This is the new equilibrium lah after dia dah correctkan things out as what I told you. Okay. Uh, sebabnya kenapa? Because direction shifted to the right. So, dia akan menghasilkan more concentration of product daripada concentration of reactant. Okay. So, that's why concentration of PCL5 is higher than its original concentration. While CL2, dia macam slightly higher juga. Tapi, dia lower than the concentration just after the CL2 is added. Okay. Ha, macam ni. You can see lah here. Ha, dia slightly higher. Sebab kita kan memang add uh, Cl2 kan pada the chemical system. Dia slightly higher tapi dia still low daripada concentration of the product. Okay. Kena macam tu. And concentration of PS3, uh, PCL3 pun dia akan jadi turut rendah daripada dia punya original concentration just because uh, dia ikut sama berkurang bila dia nak correct kan. Dia nak buat pembetulan dekat this system supaya mencapai equilibrium. Okay, so now, uh, adakah dia punya equilibrium constant, which is Kc tu, berubah? Uh, kalau let's say kita disturb dia punya sistem at equilibrium, okay? Uh, let's test this out. Okay, so uh, if let's say kita calculate the equilibrium constant Kc at original equilibrium, okay, Kc expression ni sama sahaja uh, di mana concentration of product ke atas, bahagikan dengan concentration of reactants ke bawah, Okay, so now uh, 
kita nak test this out at the original equilibrium you just masukkan sahaja value of concentration equilibrium concentration originally ni you masukkan saja and you know that you will get the value is 24 so what about kalau let's say you add uh, you disturb uh, dia punya equilibrium tu punya sistem adakah kc dia akan berubah so let's test this out okay however this is the new equilibrium concentrations after the cl2 is added okay so ada new equilibrium so you masukkan saja nilai-nilai ni dia punya kc expression sama saja cuma nilai dia berbeza so jawapan dia apa 24 sama kan ah uh, so nak bagi tunjuk tahu kat sini kalau let's say factor of concentration ah uh, memanglah dia akan kalau let's say you add dekat bagi reaction ke produk ke dia akan merubah ah uh, apa tu equilibrium tersebut tetapi once the equilibrium is achieved, uh, dia punya uh, equilibrium constant which is Kc dia does not change with the change in concentration. Okay? Dia hanya cuba ubah uh, the net reaction sahaja sama ada proses to the left ke, to the right ke supaya dia mencapai equilibrium. But at the end of the day, once the equilibrium tu dah re-established, dia punya Kc value will still be the same. Okay? Okay, so what happen if uh, kalau kita decreasekan concentration uh, on this chemical system? Okay, so for example, if let's say I remove PCL3, if I remove it completely, so siapa yang akan terasa bahagian reactant? So reactant yang terasa sebab kenapa? Because sekarang bila you remove PCL3, Kiranya you akan remove concentration for this whole reactant. Walaupun you remove salah satu, but this whole reactant akan terasa. So, this whole reactant punya concentration akan berkurang. So, again, if you want to understand this further, you boleh build this QC expressions. Okay. Di mana you tahu PCL3 ni concentration dia berkurang. So, bila PCL3 concentration dia berkurang, therefore, uh, QC ni akan bertambah just because of dia punya relationship is indirectly proportional so concentration of product akan bertambah okay so how can you reduce the disturbance at this rate you know yang qc ni is more than kc ha so that means the system is not at equilibrium okay so how can you reduce the disturbance you can reduce the disturbance uh, disturbance tu ialah bila uh, PCL3 ni punya concentration decrease lah because you remove it right so you can reduce it since that you know that Q ni is uh, more than K kalau you ikutkan Pac-Man ni punya analogy uh, dia nak ke mana reaction tu uh, supposedly kalau let's say dah dia punya concentration ni reduce what can you do to correct it out you need to naikkan dia punya concentration so how can you uh, naikkan concentration dia is when the reaction is proceeding to the left. Okay. Reaction tu kena proceed to the left. So, bila reaction tu proceed to the left, makanya kita akan bertambahkanlah concentration of the reactant. Uh, itulah correction dia according to the Lewis-Chatelier's principle. So, sekarang ni bila uh, reaction tu proceed to the left, concentration of PCL3 dengan Cl2 akan ber Tambah, okay. Uh, basically, concentration of the whole reactants akan bertambah. Uh, concentration of product akan berkurang, okay. Okay, guys. So, what if you have this general chemical system? Okay, so what if kita ubah-ubah concentration dia lah. Contohnya, kalau let's say I increase the concentration of product. Kerana product ni dia punya concentration dia bertambah banyak. So, what can I do? to shift the reaction supaya dia mencapai balik equilibrium since dia bertambah, kita kenalah kurangkan dia punya penghasilan so untuk kurangkan dia punya penghasilan produk supaya concentration of this product berkurang ialah by making the reaction shift to where? shift to the left uh, because bila dia shift to the left nanti dia punya concentration of product berkurang ok so, dia akan mencapailah kembali equilibrium. So, next. What if 
uh, you decrease the concentration of product. So when you decrease the concentration of product, uh, so, so the system will not be at equilibrium. So what can you do untuk mencapai balik equilibrium? You can naikkan balik concentration of this product. How can you naikkan balik concentration of this product? Is by making direction shift to the right. Okay, because bila uh, you shiftkan direction to the right, uh, therefore, uh, nanti you akan menghasilkan lebih banyak product. So, concentration of product pun akan bertambah kembali. Okay, that's how you do it. Uh, macam tu lah. Kalau let's say you increase concentration of reactant pula, so bila dah terlebih-lebih banyak, you kenalah kurangkan dia supaya dia mencapai balik equilibrium. Macam mana nak kurangkan dia balik? Uh, you kenalah make the reaction shift to where? Shift to the right. Uh, supaya dia punya concentration berkurang kembali. So, bila concentration dia berkurang kembali, so dia mencapailah equilibrium. So, lastly, what if you decrease the concentration of reactant? So, kalau you decrease concentration of reactant, uh, apa yang you boleh buat untuk capaikan balik dia punya tahap equilibrium, you boleh naikkan. So, macam mana you nak naikkan kembali uh, the concentration of reactant by making direction shift to where? Shift to the left. Ha, supaya produk ni dia lebih menghasilkan lebih reactant so bila dia menghasilkan lebih reactant the concentration of reactant pun akan bertambah so mencapailah balik equilibrium ok faham ke tidak ok for further example if you say you have this chemical sister uh, you ubah concentration ok contohnya lah you ubah concentration reactant hydrogen gas So, apa yang you ubah tu? You increase kan the concentration of hydrogen gas. So, bila you increase kan the concentration of hydrogen gas, okay, walaupun you increase kan salah satu, therefore you increase, you akan increase kan the whole reactants. So, bila you increase kan the whole reactant punya concentration, macam mana you nak correctkan dia kembali? You kena kurangkan uh, the concentration of reactant. So, macam nak kurangkan concentration of reactant, uh, direction needs to shift to where? to the right uh, supaya concentration dia berkurang ok so bila dia shift to the right apa yang akan berlaku concentration of H2 and I2 akan berkurang concentration of HI akan bertambah uh, HI ni product ok uh, it's all about reactor dengan product uh, macam tu which one yang you kacau dia punya concentration uh, so you akan buat sesuatu lah untuk mencapai balik tahap equilibrium dia ok And then the next example, what if you kacau concentration of H2 lagi? Ha, kacau concentration of reactor ni. You kurangkan concentration of reactor. So what can you do? Untuk mencapaikan dia punya tahap equilibrium balik, bila you kurangkan dia, you kena tambahkan. So macam mana nak tambahkan? You have to make sure direction needs to shift to the left. Sebab you nak tambahkan kembali the concentration of this whole reactor walaupun H2 je yang you kacau. So, apa yang berlaku? Concentration of product HI akan berkurang. Concentration of I2 and H2 reactants akan bertambah. Okay. What if I kacau concentration of the product pula? Which in this case, what if I increase the concentration of product? Bila I increase, untuk capaikan balik equilibrium, I kena decrease kan the concentration of HI supaya dia capai equilibrium. Macam mana I nak decrease kan dia? So, therefore, untuk I decrease, I kena dermakan. Kena tolak direction to the uh, to the left. Okay, bila I tolak direction to the left, uh, therefore, uh, the concentration of the reactants ni akan bertambah. So, uh, that's why concentration of I2 dengan H2 reactants ni akan bertambah. Tetapi, concentration of product HI ni akan berkurang untuk mencapai equilibrium. Okay, so you can try this out uh, to test your understandings.